I got a quick question for you, Greg. Yes. I know it's 7 a.m. here for us. What time is it there by you? It is 20 past one. That's good enough for me. It's game day. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Will Colvin get another duck this season? A live poll during the episode five of our podcast. 43% saying yes, 31% saying more than one, with 25% backing Colvin saying no. He repaid a bit of that faith this past weekend. BCC Daniel says, how do I vote? And Matthew Mint says, pala pala, let's vote ANC. Over to the WhatsApp group chat. Lloyd Bernard quotes St. Kelvin in the episode. He went for 40 runs and three overs, he says. I can't support a podcast that pays no attention to facts. It's a joke. Unsubscribed. Oh, he uh, put a bit of that hate with the bat and the ball this past weekend. Looking at the YouTube comments, hashtag Skultz out. Tim says, sure, feeling the love and they're catching them feels. Welcome all to episode seven of Seeing Off the New Ball, a Bergfleet Cricket Club original. And um, we've got a bumper episode for you today as we recap on the past weekend's action that saw the first four win clean sweep, which is a first for the club. The ones returned to winning ways with a big ton on the board to discuss. The twos continued their perfect start to the season with the Thursdays and the Titans both managing to chase down their oppo scores over the weekend. My name is Greg, your host, and joining me today are our regulars, Kelvin and Kenny. How are you lads doing? Yes, very well, thanks. I got a quick question for you, Greg. Yes. I know it's 7 a.m. here for us. What time is it there by you? It is 20 past one. That's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> So I take it you're on, on holiday, Colvin. Uh, it's actually my year end function today. Oh well, that so it's the end of the year, really. So that is the the definition of it's twelve o'clock somewhere. Well played, well played. Joining us late in the show is part of the leadership crew in Wesley Fantonda to recap the first half of the Thursday season, and then we've got a very special discussion with the man, the myth, the legend, Craig Griffin. Our first guest joining us today is my younger brother. The man for every occasion, last man standing maestro, Matthew Armstrong. How are you doing today? Morning, gents. Uh, happy to be on, on the pod uh, with you guys. Good, good. Happy to have you. I just like how things the, going. I like for the viewers just to know that um, Matt isn't a victim of anything. It's just a dark image over there, but I promise you. I'm picking up those vibes too. He looks like a journalist uh, that's being held against his will yeah, I, in a foreign country. <laughs> Somewhere in like the Middle that. East. I'd oh, just like to say that, you know, it was an honest with me. <laughs> Good to have you on, Matthew. You were part of the twos on, uh, on Sunday as you hosted the men from Blue Downs. Put you boys into bat first, I hear. The boys put up 258 in their innings and managed to defend it with a few notable performances with bat and ball. Back in the runs there, Matt, how does it feel? Yeah, it's felt pretty relieving because it's been a bit of a lean uh, season for me so far. I've been noticeably deep in my, deep in my batting fields. Um, <laughs> but getting some runs and doing it in the, the quick fashion that I normally do felt good. I'm going to actually talk about that because I'm just going to read through what um, the scorecard says. Um, so just bear with me here. Four, 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 one, six, six, four, six, four, one, four, six, four, one. <laughs> what do you have against well, running your runs? I was actually quite keen to, to like put in a proper conservative batting stint in. But if, if they just ball on my legs or in the arc, that ball is going on to ladies' mouth. There were plenty of gaps that I uh, somehow just found. I mean, I Kelvin, we, we... After your first one single, you had to really hit home and hit two sixes in a row after that one. Get a single, you're like, no, 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 this is just not acceptable. Better get two sixes just to get <laughs> up that strike rate. Oh, I think what was more unacceptable left about 10 to 15 of those... Um, of those uh, balls that are fast. You left I them. Intentionally left them. Well, I mean, with a strike rate in the 180s plus, depending on which game on stumps you are following, I guess you can afford to leave them. I actually wasn't watching the game live. I was at home watching stumps. 
and I kept screenshotting going, guys, this is naughty. What is he doing here? <laughs> Four fours in the first over of the game. And then um, whenever I did see a dot ball, I just, in my mind, I was saying, oh, a little swing and miss. Oh, a little swing and miss. <laughs> and then I was watching a different game. Like, yeah, there's me frothing about uh, a good knock again for a change. And then just realize now it's not even half of your score that you made on Saturday. Uh Stop it. So, Matty, take us through the match on Sunday. How did the match pan out? It started off well. Bernard winning the toss by mutual consent. And they they looked to... They wanted to have a ball first. We wanted to have a bat. Quick start. Um, and then we had a little BCC crumble. And then Bernard and Jamie came in, steadied the ship and scored. I think it was a, over 100 or like close to 100 partnership. Jamie with... A lot more twos than he would have liked, and um, <laughs> he was a bit knackered afterwards, which which is why he only bowled two overs of seam up uh, later on. Uh, Bernard watching his unorthodox batting style was very entertaining, and um, he nearly s- swept one onto his stumps. Um, I think in the nervous forties, and went to his fifty with another sweep. He really had a. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah! No bash raise, no clap, no 50. All we got was a shot. That could have happened at any time in the inning. So whoever took that video, that guy's fired. Speaking of videos, we've got Matthew's video raise. Yeah. Quite, um, quite uh, comfortable out there. Oh, Matty! Oh, oh, a very good highlight for me so far this season. As you can see there, one, one of the balls that I left in tension. So a good quality leave. Yeah. That's a good quality leave. When I saw the video, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit impressed. I went, oh, wow, leave. Oh, hello. <laughs> and then I'm not going to leave two in a row. Stay ball, but this time I'm going to back with jab it through the covers. I like it. So the question I have for you, uh, Matt Armstrong, was what was happening to your teammates around you? Up until uh, Jamie came in, everyone was dropping quickly. All my teammates seemed to be playing a bit too early. Jesse Caswell, he had a little bit of a golden duck there. A little cover loss from the night before. Um, Most probably. No, he, he probably was. After he came out from batting, he yeah. sat on the side there and he he's like, yeah, I can't remember um, batting there because I'm still, still hungover from the night before. I mean, it's Friday, he's probably watching this podcast in Pirates right now. Did Jamie get 50 or not? Uh, uh, no, he didn't. Um, so, uh, was, so him and Kabir. Yeah, technical. They got, both got 40s. Uh, so it was avoidance, uh, in other words. It's not out, but it I was. saw that one accounted as avoidance, yes. Mm. And well batted down the order um, by Kabir uh, with a good 40. Yes, avoidance, but um, that's a top effort, especially after the BCC crumble. Listen here, we're going to Christmas, so crumbles are probably only on apples. I don't want to take crumble. any credit away from Kabir's effort. I mean, he batted well and so on, but on Tuesday at training, he padded up, oh, that should be good. went into the net, had James bowl to him, two balls, smoked James onto the Astro, and was kind of just standing there for 15 minutes on his own. And then I rocked up and went, hey, like, You've padded, you have no bowlers. What are you doing? Are you just imagining figure the what? And he goes, No, no, James is bowling to me. And I look at James is on the far side of the Astro. <laughs> I'm like, You've hit your only bowler. Like, well, who does that? <laughs> so then I grabbed a ball, and I think James and I bowled at him for about an hour before anyone arrived to training. So, not saying it's our fault, but I think after facing a good Bowling attack of myself and James, you know, mm. anyone would have looked easy on a Saturday. It was very chuffed with his knock that straight after the innings, he came out, still, still kitted up, straight onto the, onto the phone to his folks to say uh, what he did. Thank you. Oh, that's a legend. legend. Oh, Paul Mott. No, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I would assume the man of the match on the day, Lloyd with his 50, uh, batting with the middle to lower order. Forward. And four sticks, if I'm not mistaken, that's him, top of the wicket taking charts. Uh, at the stage, uh, he is he is top. Um, he was quick in Adam's ear on Tuesday uh, to get Adam to fix the stats so that he is top of the the bowlers log. He must be sending those stats off to to some scouts or, or, or someone because he he's very into his stats. So no, he um, that's a great effort. And we're going to go to the ones. Um, the ones managed a big 113 run win against the men from Mitchell's Plain, putting on a big innings. 
Uh, first innings total with uh, man of the hour, Kelvin, putting on a big 129 off 132 balls. Kelvin, take us through that special innings. Oh, how much time do you have? Okay. Actually, <laughs> actually, wait. It, sorry to interrupt. Cheers. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cheers, Madeiras, for the beer. Now, Mr. Newland. So take us through that innings there, so Kelvin. Just it started off well. We were just putting away bad balls and climbing. When we had about drinks, I kind of do a little whisper in someone's ear and I say, hey, mate, like, how much am I on? Am I close? You know, I don't like the whole throwing mm. it away in the 40s. So I always like to know if I'm close or not. But weirdly, I... Uh, Seems to happen to quite a few of your yeah, teammates. maybe they should also ask those questions. Maybe, um, maybe it's something we should all ask. Um, but I actually, funny enough, didn't ask uh, this time. Felt very focused for some reason. First over after drinks, I managed to get 12 of that over, which then took me to the 50. Uh, so it had happened quite quickly, so there wasn't quite a slow progress of... Uh, see, funny enough, mm. there's no video of me getting to my 50. I think everyone just assumed I was nice. going to go all the way. Um, so then... Uh, then just batted through, uh, lost a few wickets, so the innings kind of jumped a little bit. Then Josh came in, Josh and I made a 100-run partnership, and then this is funny, nice. uh, Josh was on 48 or 47, I'm not sure, Seven. 47, okay, and uh, I walked up to him, a ball before he went out, uh, before the over goes, and I say, Josh, listen up, bud. I say, look, mate, um, we're, we're in the T20 finals. This is the team we're playing against. I mean, <laughs> I'm in my 70s. You're on 40-odd. Like, who's going to not select us if you go on to score 50 as well? He looks at me, and he smiles, and I'm like, yes, mate. You understood exactly what I mean. <laughs> Goes back to the mark, tries to smoke it over long off head, and it gets caught in the boundary. And I just looked at him, and I went, is it what I said? And he goes, it was what you said. And I was like, okay. Okay, my apologies, and then you walked off. <laughs> uh, apparently, and, um, and who called you, Mister Newlands? Oh, so, so, so I don't know if it was uh, from their side or from our side. So then I got to hundred. Okay, so yes, raised the bat, and I also may I add in this uh, in this innings, I had no mistakes, no LBW calls, no drops, nothing. Like it was. That was going to be my follow-up. Yeah, it was. It was question. honestly, it was crazy. Uh, when I got to the second drinks, um, I asked what I was on, and someone said eighty-two. And then I was like, okay, cool. Uh, like, and I said in my mind, like three, four bad balls. That's all I need you. And I've got a hundred. Uh, two came, got two fours. And then I saw Anu walk up with the video camera. And I said, I was like, shit, you're probably in your nineties. You've miscounted somewhere. And then I was like, you know what? Mm. Anu, you're not going to bait me. So I don't know if you guys watched in the stumps, but it went from 91 all the way to hundred, all in singles. I made Anu stand out there and video oh, wow. record every ball. I was <laughs> not going to lose my wicket. With the camera crew up on the boundary. <laughs> okay, so then after hitting my hundred, then uh, then this one guy started chirping me. So he was quiet the entire game, and then all of a sudden he was like, "Oh man, you know, not deserved. You're not the right guy to score 100. So I looked at him at short cover, and I was like, "Geez, it's a lot of talk for someone who hasn't actually picked up the ball. Actually, he opened, but he opened. He had a short little spell and left again. And then he just oh, just jumps up and says, "Give me the ball. I'll get him out." And I was like, "Okay, so be it." <laughs> and he takes the ball. And I think I hit that over for 18 or so. It was two sixes and a four in a row and a few more. And then I chirped him like, I hope you're going to come through to Newlands. I, I, would, I wouldn't mind facing this there. He said something back. And then I replied with, a, well, I hope you're not going to have any spectators coming to watch you. This is what you plan on bowling. And then that <laughs> started the Newlands thing. And then Rush, funny enough, Rush um, was faced the next over. And then he had to get, to get a single off the last ball. And he hit it like to the guy all the way to deep. And I shouted, no, I want to face the guy again. And that caused, no. you know, that caused a whole lot of nonsense. And then I thought to myself, I, I can just hit him straight over his head for six or whatever it is, or I can think of a way that's really going to make this guy itch. So I tried to reverse paddle and got bowled. So <laughs> um, and honestly, the ball came at me and I panicked and I jumped out the way and hit my stump. So it was completely a joke of a shot. But luckily, I was on 129 and no one cared anymore. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, then I walked off and then. In the fielding, this is where probably the Newlands thing, I kept my comments were, boys, I'm going to Newlands. Who's coming with me? Because that was, I was trying to fire up the bowlers to get some wickets. So I think that's why <laughs> I got the whole uh, the Newlands. Newlands. Yeah. I do find nice. it an uh, um, interesting strategy to start sledging someone off they've got 100. That's also yeah. what uh, threw me off, to be honest. 
But then I also thought, I mean, geez, he's all the way back. to 100. I mean, let's try to throw him off somehow. And it worked. I mean, 29, 29 runs later, there I was in the game room. So. <laughs> Moving on, James. Very much welcome to the Wines Bay. Um, it only took you 36 years to get here, but uh, you, know, you made, it, made it in time. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of great players that played for this team, and now you've got a lot of great players that played for this team. Welcome to Wines Bay. Good solid debut for Rusty doing what Ryan Fenecke couldn't do in the ones um, with a, a good solid performance holding the middle order together. Came in when I was batting, so he just did a little bit of knocking around, getting the ones, getting it everywhere. Then uh, he had to, unfortunately, on debut hear my chirps and me starting fights with people. So, and he just had a mature innings from the day from the moment I left. I, I went out, and then someone had to keep it going. He kept ticking the runs. Uh, I can't I think now who he batted with for quite a while. It was somebody. Um, mm, Aiden Williams. Aiden Williams. Aiden, Aiden Williams, Williams that's my next. I can have to get that. Mm. And Aiden Williams walked mm. in and kind of just took over the role of putting away bad balls, hitting a four, hitting a six. Yeah. And Rush just played the role of, you know, getting the ones, putting the bats on, on strike. He was hitting the ball. And I think it's just a perfect role for that number like an A.B. de Villiers kind of inning. He was good fun. He was also quite chirpy in the field. He, I hope he's. I hope he sticks around. Three wickets for Daniel Steyer, two apiece for Anu and Matt James. And, and if Anu was here, he'd be talking about his economy rate, <laughs> uh, which was, again, quite low this week. Um, so good performance from the bowlers. Um, a very good... A very good uh, victory for the ones. Um, I think the with especially with another top team losing this past weekend uh, makes this uh, ones league very competitive. I'm still very excited for when that batting lineup fully fires. That's going to be a 450 score. And I mean, we've got people there that have not quite hit their straps this season yet. So um, I'm very excited for when everyone starts firing at the same time. Well, talking about firing, and, and this will be the last thing we, we, we say on the ones here. Um, Matty, work's cut out for you to get back into that team. Uh, we're going to go with uh, your quick fire question. So, of uh, Madeiras or Pirates? I've, I've had my fair share of time at Pirates in the past, but I'm going to go for Madeiras now. Personal yeah. growth, eh? Yeah, it's a newly effect. Favorite away venue? I think it would either be um, Province or uh, Camps Bay away. On the beach there, it's quite prime. Best player you have played with? Tough call, but I think I'd have to go for Kenny. Like we, we played well Your together. Brother. It was a good, it was a very good um, <laughs> season. Favorite shot? Cricket shot? The boundary. Over the rope. Yeah. It uh, doesn't matter how. Last one here. Loosest teammate you have played with? Oh, uh, it was between two guys from uh, early days at Bergfleet, but it must be Tony Mills and Keegan O'Connell. Mm, I thought yeah. you might say that. Any recent uh, loose club members there? Ooh, I think uh, Calvin on, on the piss does uh, take the cake every now and then. Everyone uh, keeps it more in check nowadays. Hey, best of luck. Uh, for this weekend's game and um, yeah get back into that ones uh, all roads lead to Newlands good to have you on I'm captaining the side seems I've got 129 and I'll select you buddy <laughs> I did say to Aiden I did say to Aiden that uh, he may be in as a bathroom but I'm still looking for a wiki keeper <laughs> cheers Matty well cheers guys well, nice to have you the firsties um, so our firsties wrapped up their first half of the season with a great victory against our friends from Weinberg Cricket Club a little bit of revenge there Getting across the line by two wickets in a pulsating and competitive game. Top score on the day goes to Admire with a good 42. Unfortunately, avoiding a 50 there with the pick of the bowling going to... Drum roll, please. Ryan for Nick Kirk with another three sticks. Don't know how he does it. Uh, lemon balls take lemon wickets. Craig Griffin will talk about that a little bit later. So we joined on the pod today by Wesley Fantonda, the walking bicep man himself to take through... Take us through this match and to recap the Thursday's first half of the season. How are you doing, mate? Hey, good, good. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on board. Um, the man's just about to go to gym, and that just shows you how early we record this. Uh, there's a lot of confusion going around. Did you actually play this past weekend? Because as no. for the score card, you got one wicket <laughs> and you got a duck, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct, apparently. I was on holiday in Montague. But somehow I still made the team and still made an impact and didn't get TFC. So I'll take it. Some say that you made an impact on and off the field, uh, both uh, at Bergfleet <coughs> and in uh, Montague. 
Um, so from your relatively uh, comfortable situation in Montague, take us through the game on Saturday. Yeah, so obviously it was a big game for us, you know, going back to Weinberg after, we, I mean, we played them at the first game of the season, took a big loss to them, you know, by 100 and solid runs. <laughs> so we wanted to make a big impact um, for this one and obviously get revenge, which we, which we happened to do. So yeah, we, we held our own with the ball, restricted them to a nice target, knew that the weather was going to be a factor. The boys came out to bat, things were looking good. As soon as the rain came down, panic set in. <laughs> And with, I mean, single digits to get to, to win the game, I think we lost another two or three wickets with Oaks just trying to finish it on a high and made it a little more difficult. But that's a true Thursday's fashion. I mean, we've done that a couple of times this season. At least we managed to get the win this time. Some squeaky bum time. Um, so what, what happened there? So Admire just held the innings together. What did you guys chase? What- uh, your guess is as good as mine. Remember, I wasn't actually there. <laughs> Great planning. Let's Great just say, cooking. let's just say that the, the total wasn't high enough. You know, we brought it right. home at the end. But Admire, Admire's been a, a solid foundation for us this entire season. He's literally, you know, held the team together. His little nickname that we got for him is the Harari Ferrari, and you know, he lives up to that every single week. The man is an absolute gem. Unfortunately, you missed out on that ton a few weeks ago. You know, 50 avoidance and now 100 avoidance as well. So, you know, the man's just trying to keep his spot in the 30s. That's all he is. No, true. So how's the, the first half of the season gone for you personally? It's been pretty good. Uh, 10 wickets for the first half of the season. So I can't really complain. Uh, looking to obviously capitalize on that in the second half. Um, we'll take any extra games that come along. It's been a good, fun season. Uh, somehow you guys are scraping the bottom of the barrel by making me captain a few of the games. But yeah, <laughs> second game of second game of the season, we got a nice little bonus point win against Western Promise Cricket Club, which I mean, was you said it, I didn't say it. Let's continue. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> if you Oaks aren't going to give me the thunder, I'll take it myself. So you had a good bonus point win away to to WPCC. Yeah, which was which was a great way you know, to get the season back on track. And then Weller has just been you know phenomenal with just leading the boys. I mean. He's also introduced us to one of the biggest highlights of the season, which was getting pumped for the biggest six uh, at Ottomans. <laughs> did, it, did, it, did it go into the river or into the road? No, so it went back over his head, out the field, across the road, across the next part of the road. It was, it was gone. We actually called drinks mid, uh, mid-over. mid Somebody's poor onion salt, <laughs> he just got like, knocked out of his hand. Who was the unlucky person that had to fetch that ball? No, some person walking past because it was going to take too long for one of us to get there. Joint seventh in the wicket-taking charts on 10, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, who is it that you really want to just stay ahead or catch on the wicket-taking charts? I know Adam's not playing, but I mean, he would be the easy <laughs> easy picking there. Yeah, I mean, even, who, even if he was playing, he wouldn't be in contention, so that's fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love it. <laughs> but no i mean obviously the ultimate goal is to just try and stay top three and uh you know i'd love to catch up two booms to bernard but the man's playing mm-hmm. out of his boots at the moment well you know cricket boots i guess sure. they're called yeah. he's, i mean he's playing really well so it's going to be tough to catch the boy he's got a double header this weekend too which doesn't help things while well, the rest of us are on by and uh, end of season so surely you want to beat ryan for kneecap on the wicket column sure is he ahead of me on the wicket column yes I think he is. Uh, I think he's on 11 or 12 sticks. Well, if he comes to play for the Thursdays, because at the moment, James D. Clark is injured, then it shouldn't be a problem taking out Ryan. <laughs> but we'll stick him at keeper. He can't take wickets when you keep him. So. He is still the top uh, the top all-rounder in the club. So put some respect on no, his 100%. Name, that makes sense. But that's fine. <laughs> there is quick. only, there is only one real uh, all-rounder um, at this club, and that's Ryan Van Lloyd Bernard, he's got no chance. I, I just love the conversation when we're talking about all-rounders in the club and we're throwing Ryan Finnekirk, uh, Lloyd Bernard, deserved, I think, and then Tim Skoltz in there. Love it. Love it. It's my favorite <laughs> on, ongoing trend in the club. Um, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, Wes, um, yeah, what, what are your highlights? I mean, you mentioned the WPCC game. Uh-huh. Anything further back in the memory bank that's that that comes to mind i'm um, just pulling out you know the um the last over win versus peninsula that was i mean we tried our hardest to lose that game by dropping seven catches and you know again just the boys pulled it out and managed to get the w which was a big highlight and i think that's really set the tone for you know going into the break because after that we got another two wins on the trot and so the momentum is heading in the right direction so it was a win that came at the perfect time and it was a win that's you know, really got the boys 
bonding together and really, you know, realizing what type of team we have, which was, you know, pretty lucky to see. Uh, a few quick fire questions. Uh, no doubt you've um, heard a few. Um, if you mm-hmm. if you watch the podcast, Madeiras or Pirates? Ooh, oh, ah, Madeiras, easy one. Favorite away venue? Ronnebosch. Best player you have played with? Not Adam, so it's Admire. <laughs> admire, good. And um, what's your favorite shot? Oh, jeepers, the slog sweep. Not that I get to play it much because I'm bad eleven. <laughs> and lastly, loosest teammate you have played with? Ziad. Yeah, Lucis. Jeepers, that oak's got a mouth on him and doesn't stop him. Eh? On and off the field, I hope. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Wes. Um, great, great first half of the season for the Thirsties. We'll get Wella to, to do the full recap uh, at the end of the season. But uh, good to have you on. No, thanks so much for having me, boys. Go smash that uh, gym session. Yeah, time to get it done. Awesome, Jim. <laughs> Some gents. Um, we then head over to the Titans. Uh, they got the win over the past weekend with a well-measured run chase against the men from Hanover Park. They managed the run chase well with the top score on the day going to Jakustofberg uh, with another 50 avoidance for the club ending on 47. But the boys were in good hands as they were taken home by the finisher, the enforcer, the enigma. That man <laughs> It's Craig Griffin. Welcome to the show. Good to have you on. Uh, thanks, James. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> and this is uh, another win for the club. First one in the in the season. So, cheers. Oh, look, I'm in the office, so I can't be drinking a beer, but I'll definitely have some coffee with you. <laughs> eh? yes, um, oh, my word. Talk to us about that mug. Oh, just okay, okay. That uh, This will be my Star Wars Stormtrooper. Thing is I love to troop in with the buggers on the cricket field and take all the wickets, eh? <laughs> I just love it that Peter's going to just put the um, the the Star Wars music over that. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I love it already. <laughs> but how is your love season it. going? I'm hearing rumours of an average that is just a club cricketer's envy. So how's it going for you so far? Well, current, currently that uh, that average is at 31, hey, for one wicket the entire season. Um, and it was a run out on the non-striker's end, Nogal, on a pretty uh, smet field too, but we won't go there. Um, but other than that, uh, solid little knocks, eh? Some, uh, some good coaching from a few lads at the club. Shout out to the man next to me and uh, shout out to the, the oak that's normally on the pod, eh? Good old uh, Beard himself. Good old Beard himself. Yeah, talking about uh, Beard, I see there was a video going around from Tuesday. Yeah, to compensate for the step back. I don't know. Oh, 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 just pointing him back to his run up. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a look, eh? There's, what there's a been nice a lot of work on batting. Definitely a lot of work on batting this year. To hit to hit one of the club's premier quicks in the nets like that um, shows a level that uh, we love to see. Um, I mean, especially when we come into the performances um, of this season. I mean, looking over to to the ball, uh, four sticks so far um, for you, Craig. So. Go ahead and just explain to the viewers um, your bowling style and and what it's called. <laughs> let's, let's put it this way. It has been dubbed over the years to be the slowest of slow poison. It does, uh, it does some funny things on the pitch, just saying. Line length and, uh, yeah, we'll see what goes on afterwards. Oh, there's, there's a song that comes to mind. Uh, it's poison running through my it's slow poison. poison. There you go. Uh, I think the advice I'll give I'll give Claremont is to expect the unexpected. Kelvin, yeah. I that, think I think you've got um, Craig's new drinking song right there, the slow poison. Oh, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Speaking about the Always. slow poison, you've already mentioned it. 
um, so far. But Craig, just lift that ball up. Just take us through what that ball, cricket ball, so, means so to you. So here's today. the talisman on a little stand that I still need to mount it onto. But uh, <laughs> that uh, that was a a seven wicket, seven over um, spell that we had at uh, Franksburg. God uh, rest the soul. Um, and uh, that was a spectacular moment. Um, good line and length, and uh, and Oaks uh, properly had no idea what was coming. Just so poisonous. Yeah. The in in swingers, out swingers, it just all oh, happened all in it. one go. I remember we played on the Sunday after yeah. your Saturday exploits, and you came to the field like Skulk Burger. In 2007, returning from France with the William Webb Ellis, you just came to the field on your trophy tour and just parading around. And you even took us on a masterclass, which will be released on the BCC YouTube <laughs> channel. Go comment on it. Um, absolute. I mean, Kelvin, Kenny, have you gents ever taken seven in a game before? Oh, no. I was. Not ever. Normie, I, I mean, it's absolutely. You have, you uh, have asked a fantastic for fantastic though, but yeah, yeah, but no. Not ever. Well, I, I, I'm supposed to be an all-rounder. Yeah. So. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a big weekend for, for you boys. Um, you traveling to the posher side of the M3. Uh, cucumber sandwiches and strawberries and cream are more. How are you boys looking ahead to this weekend's game? There's a bit of storm brewing uh, about. But but how how are you guys fixed for this weekend? Oh look, yeah, we we pretty excited to play on what I would consider a really good pitch. I mm. personally have never played on it, so it will be my first time. I think the guys are looking looking um, looking forward to having a good rumble on that field. I mean, especially when you guys look at the fields that you've played on, uh, oh, it's, it's going to be a great day out. Claremont are currently sitting seventh on the log with four wins and three losses uh, with you with with you boys at 13th. The inverse, three wins and four losses. So this is a big one, huh? Hey? You need to win this one to bring you level with those uh, Claremont boys. Yeah, look, eh? we, we've got this lovely ability to pull it out uh, towards the end of the season like we did last mm -hmm. year. I think we've got a bit of form coming our way, huh? Those are definitely putting in a lot of effort in the net. Maybe not so much on Tuesdays, but uh, but they're putting the effort in. And uh, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what uh, what comes from that. And then just uh, um, two questions from my side. Firstly, who do you think is prime for a big uh, showing this weekend? Jerome, and uh, and I think Tim is going to come in with a big knock. And hopefully, if I get uh, a little bit further down the order, maybe I can put in some extra effort there. Yes, nice. Good. Got to get yes, that first man. Madeiras or Pirates for you, Gigi? Uh, Madeiras has become my new favorite, eh? Away venue. Ooh, definitely Camps Bay. And then best player you have played with? Probably will be um, oh, William Solomon. Got to give him this period, eh? Good old those memories, those memories filling the bank there. Yeah. Favorite cricket shots? Ooh, I've been working hard on a leg lance, eh? And lastly, loosest teammate you've played with? Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Tony Mills. Tony Mills. Mills. Tony freaking more Mills. I don't even know if we can swear in this thing. Tony fucking Mills. <laughs> Peter will edit that uh, out. Uh, uh, and more recent? Uh, more recent. Look, eh, uh, it's tied between the Beard and uh, Skultzy, eh? We're both oh, taking up a man. Let's give it a Skultzy. Let's give it a Skultzy. <laughs> I think so. Gigi, best of luck this weekend. Uh, fantastic showing this part of the season. Uh, um, all the best. Lekker. Thanks, gents. Get okay, the 50, let's... please. Get oh, the 50. It's coming. It's coming. I want to rub <laughs> Adam's space. 50. That just about wraps it up for this week. And this is my fourth beer of the podcast for four big wins for the club. Uh, Calvin, who's your best batter of the week? You Don't know, make this awkward, hey? You can say yourself. You know, with all that happened, uh, so many 40s, Loy Bernard with the first 50, Matt Armstrong smoking a quick Back 60, run. but um, it just has to be me, unfortunately. It just has to be. I'm going to have Calvin as an honorable mention. The only reason I'm saying that is because Bernard Oof. used my old bat to get the 60. So oh, I'll give it to him. Because of that, <laughs> it has to be Bernard 60. Sorry. No, that's... And, I mean, that's controversial in it of itself. Uh, best bowler of the week? So, best bowler, uh, uh, we... The Mitchell's Payne had a 100-run partnership. 
Brian turned to kind of everyone, couldn't figure out who it was to break this partnership. He went for plenty. Dan Steyer came on, couldn't break it. And then after pretty much giving 11 Oaks a ball, he decides, you know what, tosses the ball to me. I bowl five balls and I get one wicket and I broke that partnership. So I'm taking best bowler as well. Screw it. It's Friday. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say Bernard for his four sticks, but now I'm going to have to go with Calvin for the one wicket. I mean, it's compelling. It's compelling <laughs> stuff. I think I'm going to stick with Bernard. Um, just, I mean, he, he did get four wickets, but also just the fact that he was hounding Adam to update the stats. So I'm going to <laughs> stick with Bernard. And Jens, this might be a big one, but who was your team of the week? Four, four wins to choose from. Who's your team of the week? Uh, I'm going to go with twos. They're on an unbeaten run. As long as they keep that run going, I'm going to keep it. I'm backing the old Miracle Men as well. Unbeaten trots. They're having a fantastic season so far. So for them, that's my team of the week as well. And I'm going to concur with uh, Calvin and Kenny. Twos, they're on a perfect run. First half of the season. Um, all the best for this weekend. But uh, yeah, the twos, my team of the week. And uh, just enjoy the twos in the change room as they celebrate another win. Party.